Can I see it? Uh, yeah, looks good. Wonderful. Uh, um, all right, let me fix my soda pan. Okay, uh, are you ready to start? Whenever you're ready for me. <laughs> okay, great. All right, I'm going to start my recording again in just a second, and then you can start your presentation. So I am recording now. Hello there, everyone. Thanks so much, David, for having me. Thanks so much, Anka. It's nice to be here today. Happy Thanksgiving early to everybody, since Thanksgiving is next week. And my name is Melissa Armo. I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm going to talk about my strategy that I trade in the market. If anyone has questions, you can plop it in the chat here. I can see the questions. And also, it's really going to be quite a volatile week, I think, for the market. Why? We rallied Thursday, we rallied Friday, we rallied today. Now we're selling off into the close. The G20 summit's going on overseas. We have some other economic data out the rest of the week. And of course, like I said, next week is a short week with markets. So if anything is gonna happen in the market, it's gonna be between now and Friday. Could be a big sell-off, could be a big rally. So it is a good time to train because there's been a lot of big momentum moves in the market. And pretty much between now and the end of the year, we're gonna have a lot of things going on also with the Fed with interest rates. So I focus on gaps. Gaps are something that you can see in a chart, in a live chart. I make trading decisions based on technical analysis, but all the things that I just talked about, all the things that I just said are things that I do discuss on television and people find interesting because it looks at fundamentals. Now, many times something will happen and then it creates a price reaction, okay? And this price reaction could be good, could be bad, okay? Could have a negative effect on a stock or a positive effect on a stock. But that's something that could create a gap. And today we're gonna to talk about what is a gap is. And again, if you have questions, just plop it in the room. So today we're gonna to talk about trading on the side of institutional money and gaps. And what is institutional money? Well, it's big money in the market, okay? It's hedge funds, it's big, big professional traders. Banks take positions in the market as well. If you have questions when we're done here today, you can also email me at melissathestockswish.com or you can call me at 929-3200-GAP or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. Again, it's been a very interesting time to trade. Hard to believe 2022 is almost over. It's even harder to believe that 2023 is in less than two months. And I think a lot of people tend to look back at what happened in the past year at the end of the year. They look forward to the next year, and obviously they want to make the next year better than the previous year. I often appear on TV, as I said. You can see my clips on YouTube. I try to put when I'm going to be on TV on Twitter and Facebook prior to my hits. We've been talking a lot about the Fed, rising interest rates, inflation, okay? And again, all these things are beyond your control. So as an individual trader, they're beyond your control, they're beyond my control. All we can do is make the best decisions every single day that we get up out of bed for ourselves financially. And if you're someone that is looking to make extra money because of higher inflation and the economic times we're in, trading, active trading, is something that you could do for extra money. But of course, you have to know how to do it in order to be successful. Again, if you have questions, just put them in the room. I can see them. So can you earn a living in the stock market as a professional trader? The answer is yes. I think a lot of people want to trade and they want this one huge big trade that's going to make all this money. Well, sometimes you can get a trade that goes to like a, what I call a dream target. That shouldn't be your expectation every day. Your expectation if you're active in the market is that you should have more winners than losers. What do I mean? 50% return on investment is a good winner, 100%. Again, sometimes you have huge winners, but if you just look at it like you're chunking it out, you chunk it, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it, and if you get small gains, even 50% gains, but you have more gains than losses, you're gonna be ahead and you're gonna be profitable, okay? It has to do with the consistency, which is, I think, a lot of things that people just don't focus on enough, okay? So I put in here the results. This is year to date. All the trades we did in the live trading run this year. 605,050 for year to date with an average risk of $2,800 a trade. Now this was for day trades. 
This was through last week. And this is all trades that were done on margin. Many of these trades were shorts, okay? So I try to look to have one focus per day. While I sometimes go long, okay, I do prefer to short. And we're gonna talk about that today too. But I always say to people, listen, you know, if you're in this world right now and you're feeling frustrated, we just had an election cycle, the midterms last week, if you're feeling frustrated about things, higher gas prices, again, your, your job situation, prices when you go grocery shopping, you have to empower yourself because you can't control these outer circumstances. And while there's an initial investment when you start trading, whether that's taking a class like mine or any of the other people's classes here today, whether it's setting up a trading account where you, you're putting money in to invest, if you can learn to do that, and the faster you can learn to do it, the better, you're gonna be light years ahead six months from now, fast forward, or even 12 months from now. And while that may seem like a long time, it's really not. Like I just said, this year has gone by like that. Life still keeps going very quickly. And I think it's important for people to be independent, focus on their own lives, the things that they can control, and really empower yourself to learn how to make more money in the market. So how can you be successful as a trader? How do you make it happen? And why do people find trading success so elusive? One of the reasons is because a lot of people just don't have a strategy. They don't have a strategy to focus on every single day. Like I said, consistency is very important. Or they're doing something that they think it's a strategy and it isn't. Or they have a strategy, but it just doesn't work. It's actually a losing strategy, okay? Let me give you an example. <clears throat> Buying the dip is a losing strategy. Why? It didn't work the entire year this year for the whole year of 2022. So if you bought the dip, every dip in the market, this year of 2022, you're down for the year. So that is a losing strategy, okay? A winning strategy is a strategy where you can replicate it over and over again in any market conditions, bullish or bearish, and consistently get more winners than losers. That would be a winning strategy, okay? So a lot of people, again, struggle with the strategy part of trading. The money management, to me, is very ABC. You have to risk the same amount per trade. You have to get out when you're up. Those are very ABC things that it doesn't take a long time to learn. Again, you just do it like that. But the strategy is what it takes people to learn. And then focusing on, obviously, the right thing as well. Now, as I was saying, my strategy is gaps. So let's look at a chart here. This is a spy. What is a gap? Let's take a look at it. So this was back last week. The spy closed here, gapped up, closed down here around under 375, gapped up here. This was on November 10th. Okay, so this is the night. We closed at four. Close every day at four. We're going to close in a few minutes. Then we open here up. So this was a gap up. Okay, so then what did we do in the 10th? We rally. You actually could have gone long the market here for a day, got in, got out. So this is a bullish gap. Now, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So we closed at one price and we opened at another price. That's what a gap is. Now, a bullish gap is when we open at a higher price. What's a bearish gap? Well, there was one right over here where we close at one price and open at a lower price. So this day here, we closed at one price and open lower. That was the eighth and that was the ninth, okay? So there's lots of gaps in this chart. There's lots of gaps in the market. There's lots of gaps in stocks. So I'm trying to narrow it down to pick the best one to do each and every single day. And sometimes I'll do them more than one a day, but I prefer Again, to focus on one thing a day, and I also prefer to short. But you could have gone long here, the market, last week from Wednesday to Thursday, okay? So like I was saying, having a strategy to focus on daily is very important. What does that mean? It means no distractions. So even if you like to have CNBC on or Fox Business, or whatever in the morning, or read your emails, if those things are going to distract you, it's a problem. It's a huge problem. So I say the best thing that you can do for yourself is don't allow yourself to be distracted in the morning. Try to keep it 
that you are just looking at the charts, just looking at the price data, just looking at the information that you're seeing in the charts to make decisions, okay? And again, what is a gap? Here's another example, Amazon. So this was earnings. Stock closed here, this was up here around 110. The next morning it opened down here, it was like around 97 and change, I think we opened. So this was a gap down. Over here, we had a gap up, closed here, above 85 it was, open here around 91 the next day. This was ninth, this was a 10th rally. So this is a gap, this is a gap, okay? Again, bullish gaps and bearish gaps. We have both of these in this Amazon. This was down today, by the way, people. Amazon gap down. So again, what is a gap? This is the strategy I use. A stock gap from the opening price today is a different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. So again, there's lots of gaps in Amazon. Lots and lots and lots. Can you short every down gap? No. Can you go long every up gap? No. Actually, here was a good example where we had a gap down and this reversed. Can you go long every down gap? No. Can you short every up gap? No, you can't. So again, you have to look for what I call the good ones. What do I mean by the good ones? I mean the ones that are predictable, that you can predict in the pre-market, before the market opens, before 9.30 a.m., where the stock's gonna go in the day based on the gap, okay? And actually tomorrow morning, we're gonna have two gaps. Home Depot and Walmart report earnings tomorrow morning, they're going to gap. I don't know where they're going to gap. I don't know if I'm gonna go long them or short them or what, but I know they have earnings and stocks tend to, to gap on earnings, okay? They're gonna report in the morning in the pre-market. So I will wait and see what they do at that time, okay? Any questions by anyone here? Let's look at Adobe. What happened with this guy? Oops. This is, again, another gap. Stock closed here. This was the night before the earnings. It was around 370. Opened then after the earnings in the morning under 320. Fell off a cliff. So we shorted Adobe, and we actually did a put in it too. Down here's the volume. So the put, a put is an options trade, which is basically a short. Okay, a short. Here is a bullish gap in Adobe. Rally, again, that was last week, the 9th into the 10th, okay? Everyone see that? So, again, these gaps are based on what? Institutional money, that's what I'm looking for. Big footprints in the market, big position players that are doing what? They're going long stocks, or they're going long the market, or they're shorting stocks or selling stocks or selling the market. So, ultimately, I'm looking for the power, the power of money, the power of money that's going to come in and move a stock up or down. If you trade with the power of money, you will be able to more easily profit. If you are against it, trading is going to be really, 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 really hard for you. And that's, again, what I think a lot of people struggle with because they want to make trading easy for themselves, but they don't know what to focus on and they don't know what to look at. So if you learn to spot institutional money, you can trade with it. You can make your trading life so much easier and you can make money on a regular basis if you can see where things are going. You have to make money on a regular basis if you wanna trade for a career, but even if you wanna do this part-time, actually, you have, to, you have to make money too because you'll run out of steam if you're losing. So what I'm doing is following the moves that institutional money makes in the overall market and then i'm capturing those daily moves on a small time frame which i'm doing on the one minute chart okay which we're going to talk about here in a minute so the one thing i want to point out though that a lot of people got tripped up with the market this year like i said that we're buying the dips institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times even if you think it isn't it is a big flow of money going a certain direction is what moves the market stocks and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts when you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a start. You want to be on the side of power. That, that will help you. That's going to pay you, and it's going to be make it a lot easier for you to make money, too. And again, institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. 
which is one of the reasons, actually, that I did not go long last week. While you theoretically could have gone long Thursday and got in and got out and made money, or even Friday on the day as a day trade, I did not. I did not, and I am not long the market, okay? I do not have 100% conviction that the market is getting bought with power up, okay? So not every green day is actually an institutional money buying day, just like not every red day is an institutional money selling. So this is where the analysis comes in. And this is, again, like I said, where people struggle. But you can learn it. You can learn it. You can do it. And once you process it, what you do, we learn it. Once you know the information, once it's in your brain, in your head, then you've got the information, then you can use it for the rest of your life. And that's the great news, okay? For as long as they have live data charts, I'll always be able to see what's happening, not just on the live day, but in the post and pre-market, okay? Now, here was another one that we did. This was meta. Stock close here, gap down, fell, boom. Again, look up here where we were, around 130. Gap down here, under 100. Then we fell off a cliff. Fell all the way down, broke 90. Meta was short. It was sold. It was dumped by institutional money. So again, knowing how to read this, and then you see it, you take the position, allows you to win big. That was a big move in Facebook, okay? It was right there for the tanking. The market has the ability to pay you. It's just that you may not be getting in the right stuff, okay? And this is why people come to me and take my classes and trade in my live room to learn from me or take the trades because they want to be able to capture those types of big moves. But all everything I do is based on one focus, and that makes it easy too, because whether I do options or whether I do day trades, all you have to do is look at the gap, and then you'll know what to do, where, and when. Now, this was a trade that we did in Apple. Again, Apple was down today. So this was an option. What did we do? So November 3rd, 7.40 in the morning, I looked at the gap on Apple, it was down. We did a 142 strike, that expired last week. It went, I'll show you the chart in a minute. Cost was relatively good for Apple. 350 for one contract, 20 contracts cost $7,000. This is an advanced risk. You could take more. Sold at a profit, 9,000. Now earlier I said 50% to 100% is good. Return on investment in this was 129%. That's good, that's great. That's a trade. You're chunking it out. You take the trade, you get the move, you get out. Okay, so we're doing these into the open. If you had a beginner risk, three contracts, 1,050, you could have made still the same amount, 129%, 1,350. So let's look at the chart. 142s, here's Apple, November 3rd. Take it up. Stock close here, gap down, boom. Called that trade early in the morning, fell, fell, fell off a planet, boom, done, out, drop. Came all the way down, broke 135. Okay, so this was a nice trade. 24 to 48 hours is usually what we're trying to get in the options we're doing the weeklies. Why are options something different that you could do besides day trades? Well, you can, could have day traded Apple simply because you can open up an options account as a cash account with $2,000 at a broker. You do not need to have margin and so many traders want to be able to trade, okay? on cash so they don't have to worry have to worry about the margin with a retail broker and it's actually a less it's a, it's more an expensive way to take a trade in something like this price point okay any questions from anyone as i'm tired talking let me know okay so far so good okay Let's look at Meta. Again, nice one here. Meta, strike was 92. It was a put, which is a short. Again, sent this out a little bit after the open. Cost was $2.80, 30 contracts. It was a nice profit. Sold at five, turn it around. Boom, bam, boom. 79% return on investment. That's good enough, people. As soon as you take the trade, the money's on. Then you get out with the profit. Then the money is in your account from the profit. And then you're back, back the money to take the next trade. So again, chunking it out is important to just keep turning it over. 
You know, when you open up a savings account, savings rates have increased, actually. You can get a savings account now, I think, like, over 3% or something crazy, <laughs> which is which is hard to believe. I haven't seen in my lifetime. But again, that is, you know, nowhere near what you could make on these trades when you're revolving your money over and over and retaking it. So many people look at trading as long-term investing. That's not what retail trading is. The more you can utilize your money to profit by taking it, getting in, getting out, is the better you are. And that's why we're looking to do it every single day. So this was 280. Again, four contracts, 1120. Boom. Could have made $880, risking 1120. Solid as a rock. Now let's look at the chart. Again, this was down today. I'll be interested to see where Apple closed, but this is this was down today. Uh, November 2nd. Let's go over here. Snug as a bug. Closed here, gap down, fell. Boom, drop, boom, out. Again, open here, red 95, drop, drop, drop. Again, this little guy's in here. This doesn't even maybe look like much to you, but it actually was. There was money in here. There was profit. It was a nice move. It was cash, okay? Well, the entries I teach in the class, I'm not as asking a question. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. And how I'm finding it is I'm finding the gap, but then I go through a 26 point rating system, which I did in Meta here, for example, on these particular days we did it, that I look at in the pre-market. That is what I teach in my class as well. But it's all based on the gap. So it is something that you would learn in my two day course, it's 14 hours. But the whole philosophy is based on buying and selling of institutional money, which is what I'm trying to explain to you here today. If you think that what I'm saying to you makes any sense at all, then that's where you'd reach out to me after the lecture here today to ask me questions or go to my YouTube and watch some videos. But the fact is that really, at the end of the day, trading is not as tricky as people think once you learn it the tricky part is being led to the right mentor the right teacher the right strategy to learn it i wish that you know everybody could wake up one morning decide they want to trade and all of a sudden be successful like that with the first thing they learn that's not reality and it wasn't for me either you know i traded for three years and, and i didn't know what i was doing and i lost money but i figured out the system that i that i do which i've been doing now for 14 years going on 15. so you know you have to go through a process it's a process, okay? Everything is a process. I mean, I'm the first person to tell you I am very impatient. I'm actually becoming more patient as I'm growing wiser, you know, and more mature. But I mean, I'm the first person to tell you that I'm, I'm rather impatient as well in life. But as I'm, you know, growing as, as an adult, as a human being, as a woman, I'm realizing that, you know, sometimes you are better off going through the process of whatever that process is and you become wiser. So things that you might have learned in classes or strategies you did maybe that you lost money and weren't successful, don't look at them as a waste. Look at it as a learning process to lead you through to get to the next level because sometimes that's what it is, you know? The important thing is you eventually get wise enough to realize that if you're doing something that isn't working that you stop and then you decide to learn something else. A fool's errand and a fool's game would be to continue to trade while losing money, a system that doesn't work. Or even being angry with yourself for taking a class that didn't teach you how to make money. Because it doesn't, you don't serve yourself by being angry with yourself. You're not serving yourself doing that. You gotta let it go, you gotta move on. And that's all that we can do. Same thing if I take a trade. If I take a trade and I take a trade and the trade loses, I'm not serving myself if I hang on to that angry at the gap or angry at the stock or angry at the chart. And there are trades that I have that lose. So my win ratio is around 77%. So there are trades I'm going to take that lose. So the reality is that you have to get up and I have it called amnesia and let it go. But the sooner you get on the best path, the best you're going to be. What do I mean? So you take five trades, one loses. The next one loses. Then you take three trades, they win. The next one loses. Again, out of every 10 trades with me, you're gonna have two losers or so. And that's why you have to set a daily risk. You know, I mean, if I didn't take any trades that lost, I'd never have any risk. I'd risk my whole account every day, but that's absurd. And no one should ever do that, okay? So I use stops. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit too. 
Anyways, gaps have huge opportunity. Why? Because they spot the power of money. And that is very important, again, to trade with. So gaps are created with large institutional money, the ones that you want to play with, okay? That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen to play on stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. I cannot stress that enough. And again, as I was saying earlier, that's why I'm not long this market. And I'm looking for the entry to go long the market, to go long, long term in my IRA. So to me, it's not there, okay? And actually, the results of the midterms that we were pretty much just getting this week pretty much have reinforced to me that, quite frankly, in fact, we're probably going to be lower. So therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and you play it. Gaps are an event. They're a daily event that happens in stocks in the market, and they create a sense of urgency. And specifically, why I like to short is because they, they create this sense of panic. Oh my God, we're down. What do we do? Apple's falling, or Meta, or whatever, or Amazon. But then an action is forced, it's being forced by participants of the stock, and this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading the side of power money, and that helps you make money, and then you also get the big moves, and then when you're trading on momentum, you take a 1,000 shares of something, it drops two bucks, what do you make? $2,000. You're not gonna move a stock $2, you just aren't. While there are some instances, and I call them anomalies, where you have Reddit traders that move stocks, they're far and few in between. And as you've seen this year, it's that's not working either. So you need somebody that's going to work consistently. And consistently, there is institutional money in the market. They're in all the time. Um, you uh, both, what I The only thing I can tell you right now that we've recently been looking at long is CVX, if you're looking at an up move. That just made new highs. It's oil, Chevron. If we have time, I'll pull up the chart. We're done. I, I don't remember if I have it in here. So anyways, you find gaps, rate them. How do you learn how to do that? In my two-day class. But you can find gaps actually anywhere. So it's not hard to find them. Qualifying them, picking the good ones is what is the analysis. And that's the checklist, okay? And again, like I said, it's looking at what's happening with the power of money. When, when you think about it, when you really, 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 really think about it intellectually, it totally makes sense. And you're like, oh, yeah, I can see now how it's possible to make a lot of money in the market. I can see how it is possible if I'm trading on the side of institutional money, how it is possible that I can earn extra money, earn a living, rely on it into something to, to actually have money coming in my direction. So when you think about it, it totally, totally, totally makes sense. And once you can wrap your head around that, you're going to be able to move forward. No matter what's happened to you in the past, you will be able to move forward and start to be successful because, again, it's important. I don't put trail stops on options. Someone's asking about trail stops. I don't put trail stops on anything. I use a hard stop as a limit order stop on my day trades. And as far as options, I don't put a stop because the amount of risk is a stop. If you risk $1,000 in an option, you can't lose any more than that. I play everything to win or lose. If I'm down in the trade and I take it on a Monday and it's down by Friday, I lose in the whole shebang. If you want to kill it at a set amount, I will tell you, there are times that I've taken trades that are down in the Monday that I call it. And it flips and goes, and it's down. It could be down 65%, and then it ends up being 200% winner. So I don't kill things. And this is but based on experience of doing my own strategy. But if you want to do that, you can. You'll save yourself if you kill it at 2.5%, but you're going you're gonna to miss out in winners with me if you decide to come and join the group because there will be trades that, that absolutely work that you're down in more than 2.5% to go. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you here. This is the market. Big rally here we had in July. I didn't go long here either. While we could have continued, while we could have gone up, while we could have kept going, 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 we did not. And then we fell, fell off the planet. And everybody remembers this. This was in October. Again, they kept raising rates, raising rates, raising rates. So you need to, be, you need to watch what's going on in the charts. You can't just get all excited. And again, going long every buying the dip is not working this year. And I, it's something I never did, actually. But technically, you could have done it in 2021 because it was a very bullish year. The market made a lot of new highs in 2021. So people got fat and happy and lazy in 2021 that are active day traders, going long, lots of stuff, strong stuff, weak stuff, everything, every day. And it didn't work this year, and now people are losing. But it really was something that wouldn't work consistently over the given points of years anyways. 
So if you want to come and learn my strategy, it's called the Golden Gap. It's a 26-point rating system that pinpoints the direction of power money by reading the price. And this gives me conviction to put on risk, whatever amount of risk I'm taking, and also hold trades. If you're someone that is going with the, the crowd, you're, you're going to have a difficult time. Because many people in the market really are confused and don't know what to do. And like I said, don't have a strategy. You really need an edge. So this has to be you. You need to be different. What would, be make, you, what would make you different? Well, first of all, focusing on the short side, which is what I do, is it makes me different. Second of all, only doing gaps and nothing else, nothing else at all. Okay? And then third, I'm very good at reading the one-minute chart. We are in our trades very quickly in the morning, in the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of the day. First half hour of the day is what I focus on. Sometimes I'm in trades right away, okay? That does give me an edge. But again, the rating system that I'm reading in the pre-market confirms to me that the trade is good. And it all has to do with the 26-point checklist. It's, it's, a, it's a checklist to follow. Like if you were, I can see a lot of planes from my apartment window. I live high up in a high-rise in Manhattan. Lots of planes. The pilot does not take off from LaGuardia without going through that checklist. People are checking that plane. You got this person has a checklist, and this guy has a checklist, and this guy has a checklist, and the stewardesses have a checklist. Everybody has a checklist. You need a checklist, okay? How much money are you going to risk? Where are you going to get out? What's the target? What are you going to do? Why are you doing it? How many trades are you doing today? These things help you. Condense your losses, help you get more winners. So having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart and to stop to make the correct decision. Having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias, which is key, and having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals, whatever your goals are. You know, you should have money goals too. You, you really, really should. $500 a day, $1,000 a day, whatever. You need help with that, ask me what I think. I mean, based on the size account you have. But a checklist is a plan of action. Everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action and checklist. On a professional level, all high-income career field specialists have checklists. So we're going to go through one week of trades here. These are all day trades. We did look at a couple options. These are day trades, trades that you would have had to set up in a trading account with margin. Okay. Now, if you don't have a margin account, you can open up a margin account at a retail broker with $25,000 minimum. You can be in and out as much as you want with that, 4 to 1 margin. If you want to set up a prop account, you can start a prop account with as little as 2,500. You're going to be on 10 to 1 margin. And again, they have different rules and regulations. But you can trade on margin with a prop account. So this was 15,486 for one week. We're going to go over each of the plays. We already talked about Apple. We did it on the 7th too. So this again is a little guy over here. Stock close here, gap down, boom, we shorted it. We got in, got out, done. Entry was 136.80, 1,800 shares. Risk was 30.60. Again, this is a move. A dollar a little bit, out, boom. 135.68, okay? 2016 was the profit. And again, we had a good exit on this, actually. We actually had a really good exit on this. But anyways, this was a gap down, fell. Mm. And again, I didn't see where this closed today, but I know it closed red. I know 100% it closed red. We're not in Apple now, but I'm probably going to watch it tomorrow. Uh, Kay is asking about prop accounts. Email me, Kay, and I'll send you a, an email to contact. Then on 11-4, we didn't do anything. There was no good ones. No good ones. That was the Friday. Got to wait for the good ones. Then at 11.3, we did the QQQs. Entry was 262.20, 1,500 shares. Risk was 31.50. Exit was 260.50. Profit 25.50. This was on the third. Let's take it up. So again, the QQQs closed here, gap down. We got in this sucker, got the drop. See it? It was a short. It was on November 3rd, okay? Then on the 2nd, this was, remember, the Fed day. We got in and out of this quick before the Fed announcement, but it did make the market fall. We shorted this too. 383.50, 1,500 shares. Risk was 2,700, 382.30. Again, a dollar is good. Boom, in, out, done. $1,800 profit. If you wanted to do an option in this, if you did not want to do it on margin, you could have bought one put. Could have bought the 382s or something. Here you are. Closed here. Gap down. 
We had a little move in here in the morning down, then we got out, then it rallied in the Fed announcement first, then it tanked on the Fed announcement. If anyone watched it, I watched it. And then we felt the next day. Okay. And again, you could have done an option if you didn't want to do that on margin. And then we did Uber, which ironically was a long, I haven't looked at this since today. This close here gapped up, even though this looks strange here. This is November 1st, we actually went long here. We got in, we got out, and we made money to the long side. This was a bullish gap, we went long. 30, 30 was the entry. 60 cents, in, out, boom, done. 2,400, done. Again, quick trades, fast trades, in the morning, out. Then you don't have to worry about what's going on with all these other things. And actually, if you wanna hold something, the best thing to do is to do an option, okay? Because when you're doing a day trade, you have very little minute of time. You must be out of that trade no later than four. And again, I try to be out in the morning. So it's like, you know, you gotta be out within the six and a half hours as a day trade. An option you can hold. Then 1031 in Halloween, we did Meta. This was this really nice day. It was the 31st. Stock was here, gap down, fell, boom. I don't even remember why we fell here on this day. It was so long ago. 97.40 was the entry. 1,400 shares, 29.40 risk. Again, you could take 500 shares. You could take 100 shares. You could take whatever you want. We added to it, total shares was 2,800. Average price was 97.30. You could take in 500 shares. It was a nice trade. We exited in the morning quick, 94.90. Profit was 67.20 but I wanna show you where it went. Again, people would say, was well, this the best exit? No, I do not always get the best exit. I absolutely do not. This continued all the way down, fell all the way in here, look where it went. It went another $2 on that day. But again, easier to hold the option. So we did an option in this too. So easier to hold the option. Day trades gotta get in on a fast, okay? So the whole point is, getting organized in the pre-market. So this blue pie chart, I drew this here, it's a little jiggy here. This is all the time I'm spending prepping. Like I'm gonna look at stuff tonight, then I'll get up early in the morning to look at stuff. Then I'll do my ratings and I'll look at the market. This is the time I'm trading. Less time trading, more time prep. And I think for a lot of people it's the opposite. They'll trade all day and only get ready a little bit, like half an hour before the open or something, no. Do your work in the pre-market. Get ready beforehand. Plan what you're going to do. Make the picks early. Because on the on the fly, when you're looking at stuff, chances are you're gonna you're gonna make the wrong decision on the fly. You just will. You know. It's better off having everything planned out. Again, that's the whole point of having a checklist. But if you want to consistently make money in the market, the only way it's gonna happen is if you have a high winning strategy. Good money management, that's important too. A good mentor to follow, I think, is critical as well. And again, I call the live trades in the room. Now, again, you learn in the class to do it yourself. You don't need to be in my live room, but I think it's important as a support system after the class. Time of the day that was very important. The most important time in the market is the morning. It just is. Seeing what's opening where, seeing how we're acting in the first half hour of the day. And if you want to train for a living, you can do it from home. You absolutely, absolutely, absolutely can. I think right now there's a lot of people still working from home, which is great. Hey, if your, your boss is going to let you work from home, do it. But you can trade on the side then. And if you're not working from home, you know, people are trading on their phones. People are trading on apps. There's all kinds of mechanisms now to, to open up the market so that people can access it to trade. You know, people want people in the market. You know, they want the volume. I'm not talking about brokers. Trading is about chunking it out, though. Income generation, think about what I said. Sometimes you get huge trades. But the idea of just hitting solid, solid winners in and out, there's nothing wrong with that. I think consistency is more important. It also helps your emotions. You know, if you're losing, 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 it's even if you're losing, like, you know, smaller amounts of money, it wreaks havoc on your mental your brain, you just like, you start to feel like a loser. Don't do that to yourself. Get yourself in a position, even if it's small gains, $100, $100, $100. Winning 
is very important. And then you start to feel like a winner. And then you start to feel like this is within your control, that you can do it and you can be successful. You're not gonna control the market, but you can absolutely control your choices that you make in the market. So again, if you're not seeing good results, then you need to change what you're doing so that you can see good results because that is within your control, okay? And any questions here, let me know. So my class, again, is called The Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock of the day. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. It's a great class. I had a really nice testimonial last month in October, it was. A man said he's taken a lot of classes, and he took the class. He said this is the best class he ever took. So, you know, you're going to get a full-on full on two weekend class with me. I think it's best to give people all the information at once. It is online. I don't hold back in everything that I know in the class. It's a full two day course on how to strategically find, pick and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. We mostly short. Again, classes online, I teach it once a month. There's only one more class left for this year. December, December 10th and 11th, nine to five. Class tuition is $69.99. Again, classes online, you can be anywhere in the world and tank it. Now, Black Friday is coming up. It's not this week, it's next week. So I'm doing Black Friday special sneak peek if you're interested. If you wanna sign up for this, this is going on through November 27th. You can sign up and start trading now if you want, or you can sign up up until the 27th. So this Black Friday specials are $74.99 for the Golden Gap course and the trends. So this class is normally $69.99. You're getting the trends, two with this, two classes. And you get the trading room free for one year and the options newsletter free for one year as well. This class is 9 to 5, December 10th and 11th, the last class of the year. If you can't do December class and want to take advantage of this, you can pay for it and sign up by 11.27, do the class in January. That's okay. The option subscription, if you only want to trade options, is the annual subscription, Black Friday sale, going on through 11.27, it's normally $69.99 for the year. It's $59.99, and you can be in the letter till the end of 2023. So you get a bonus time, and you save $1,000, and the Gap Options course is free as well. This means you get a bonus month, save $1,000, and get that class free. And then I have other classes here. One of the other popular ones is the Gap Options course. It's normally $2,500. It's $1,500 with one month free of the newsletter. And again, this class is in December, and then these are my other classes and the live mentorship. There's no prerequisites for the live mentorship. So I think it's important for people to think about what they're doing with their money. And, you know, I do these webinars here. David was kind enough to invite me today. I say what I think about things. You know, I try to give some nugget of information besides also discussing what I do to see if you're, come, if you're, if you're interested in becoming a client of mine. But I also try to give some piece of nugget of information. You know, today I told you I like CVX higher. And I also said, be careful if you're going long the market. Uh, this is a nice testimonial from Daryl. He's been doing really good, actually. Daryl started this year and then a bunch of other people as well. Any questions from anyone? Now, I can, I can bring up my charts if we have a few minutes here. I think I have a few minutes. Any questions from anyone? I'll go back with my contact information here and then we can quick take a peek at the market and see how it closed. It's Melissa at thestockswish.com. Let me just pull up the market really quick. I'm going to stop this, David. Then I'm going to...